in the Rangitiki district north of Martin on the property of Kim Rowe. And we're here to take a look at his experimental mixed livestock techno system. In other words, a mixture of sheep and beef. And uh, Kim has got a system of um, a solo mob of bulls and a solo mob of breeding cows in a virtual um, replicate, similar area for both, both groups. And the idea is that they're going to be swapped around at various points to get some complementarity between the sheep and beef. So, um, how's it going, Kim? Yeah, pretty well. Good. How long does it actually take you to um, shift these sheep, the, the, the actual uh, dismantling and re-erecting of the fence? Oh. Oh, between five and ten minutes. Not too bad, actually. Oh. So Kim's actually using a, um, a a dairy pack duplex system. In other words, he's got one spool with two wires, and right at the moment he's erecting a uh, a crest in the hope that the lambs can be induced to go through that gap and graze ahead of the ewes. But no great success with that one yet, Kim. With the creek, I think the odd one's using it, but uh, no, no. No major flood of activity. We'll persist with it. See what happens. Yeah, it's hard to think of any other ideas you could try, really, isn't it? To induce them through? Yeah, I think they're so trained to the fence that they're just so used to it that they just won't go through. I don't know. Some ideas might come out of it. Oh, should we go and let the girl through? Yeah, might as well. Yeah. So this mob we use is on uh, quite tight residuals. Kim's about to put them through the gate. And uh, he tells me that they come with quite a rush. So we'll watch very carefully as they come through. Ready to go there, Kim? Right. Yep. Well, that doesn't take too much time. No, no, no. no they're good. You've got to be quick, otherwise they beat you. They keep their heads up and snag the wire, but... No, we haven't had any mishaps. As long as you're aware, it might happen. So I guess they'll learn, they'll keep that habit for the rest of their lives. That could be handy. Yeah. There's a gap in the fence, though, they'll throw it. No, oh, well... Can you give us some uh, some of the basic statistics of the, the trial here, the, the hectares, the numbers? Um, I've got an 8-hectare paddock, which is split into two systems. One's running um, rising two-year-old bulls. There's 21 on a 4-hectare system there. And I started out with the ewes, um, all uh, single scanned. 120 on a 4 hectare system as well. The docks, 
108 lambs from 114 ewes. The ones missing were a couple of dead ones and uh, been taken out for uh, mother ons. But at the moment there's still uh, 114 ewes here and, and 107 lambs, I think. At the moment we're on about a 30-day rotation. It seems to be keeping them pretty happy and, and uh, quite happy with the regrowth and what's happening behind them. Just come around here so I can get a look at these sheep behind you, actually. Right, so that's it's pretty pretty steep stocking rate. Um, is it going to hit the wall? Do you think it's sustainable? What, what's what's it, now that you've been through this most of the season? What do you think of the idea of this uh, super high stocking rate? Um, gut feeling is, uh, I think we're doing it right. Uh, the l lambs aren't doing any, any staggering high growth rates, but I think when we work it out at weaning, uh, as we cut this way through heck there, which is what we're going to get paid for, I think we'll be ahead. Regarding weaning, I, I just think I'll just keep going and if, if we do hit the wall, we'll, we'll wean them. So one of the key ideas of this block is uh, that you're going to exploit the complementarity of the um, the beef and the sheep. So are you going to swap blocks at some stage next soon? Yes, I hope to do it soon. Um, yeah, the, the covers are a little bit different on both blocks. But um, I think uh, they'll complement each other. We, we can balance things up. We can move the cattle in there for another few days and just to balance the blocks up. Yeah, we're hoping to do that first thing. So you reckon the performance is looking looking hopeful? From a management point of view, how do you feel about it? What is, is the workload too big? Is uh, there special management animal health difficulties or anything like that? Animal health, no, no difficulties with the red same as, and treated the same as the others. Uh, workload, um, no, I, I don't think the workload's any greater. Um, probably because you have an interest in it, you're quite happy to do it, uh, and, you, and you see it rolling on. Uh, uh, yeah, no, I'm not too worried about it at all, it's good. There'd be considerable economies of scale in terms of the labour input if you if you had say a multiplex system going do you think do you think that would be a big deal? Yeah no doubt no doubt that would that would save a lot of time. You know, just, and, and, and at this stage having um, been able to mob them up and to check aboard and move them I, I think that that'd be uh, right onto it too dealing with bigger mobs again efficiently. So could you just explain that term, checkerboard grazing? Um, well, checkerboard grazing is uh, instead of one mob in, in one lane, you then um, amalgamate two lanes together, two mobs together, and then you, you're moving them from one lane to the next, as in through the three wire permanent fences. And uh, what that is, doing is eliminating the, um, the mismothering that, that has been occurring between lanes. Lambs come through on the shift and not going back after the shift because they're so well trained in fences. So there's always a gap between one mob and the next mob. Plus you've got a labour saving there. And labour saving, yep. Um, and time, time saving um, because you're setting up breaks across the lanes. You've got four days before you have to shift the That's good. All right, what about pasture development? Um, how does this compare to your your more normal management in regard to pastures? Oh, the thing I'm happy with is, is the control of the quality. They're taking out the seed heads, everything. It can only just flow on. I mean, once, once we get through this, this sort of time of year and, we get a bit of moisture back in the soil, we'll, uh, I think we'll just kick on. And, oh, it's really good. That uh, spell grazing is, is wonderful at the, this time of year.
having that control. We control what we're doing in a traditional system and, and now to give it some control through the spring, uh, we're standing. I think it's looking good. For 12 months controlling it. And your mob of bulls, that also a high stocking rate, how do you feel about their performance? Yeah, yeah, they're, they're a mixed bunch, but um, no, they, they've really kept going since the spring has come in. Uh, I'm really happy with them too. They're on a sort of uh, roughly between 30 and 40 day rotation. Just sort of watch the grass levels. But, um, no, they'll be right through, right through to Christmas.